Yo, what's up? It's Alexander Williamson here with the secret history living in your aquarium. What's going on, everybody? Um, how's it going? Sun is going down. That darn daylight savings time if you're in America, not Arizona. Uh, let me see who's in here. Wow, we got folks filtering in. So what is up, Alan? We got lots of people talking already, too. You guys hanging out before the show even began. So thank you, thank you. Uh, how's the night going? Uh, let's see here. Goose Not Maverick. Hello, Alan. Always going to be uh, in here. Oh, yeah, taking bets on how late I'm going to be. Uh, two minutes or one minute, something like that. Um J Rad, what's up, KP? Uh, yeah, no, uh, there is a a uh, a chance that I'll be late sometimes uh, when I set the time. But usually, what happens is I set the time uh, in the morning. I'll say I'm gonna stream at four, and then you know something happens because it's the weekend and I'm helping my wife or whatever, and I change it at one o'clock to be at five o'clock. And for some reason, it doesn't update people. Or if I'm like a second past the time and I haven't logged in on the computer to be waiting, it like makes up another time, like just down the road. So kind of odd, but what's up? Ah, New England Endler, always lurking. That's okay. That's okay. Plenty of fish do that too, and we love them all. I uh, got my Dr. Pepper. They're not paying me, but they should be. Um, so today I wanted to talk about, uh, wanted to talk about colors. So, uh, what do you guys think? How's that sound? Um, the other thing I should do before we jump into the illustrious topic that is, uh, colors, um, water changes. I like to hear that people are doing them while they're listening to the show, uh, you know, I'm trying to, on the live streams, be a little more, like, uh, graphic with my words, maybe. Not in, not in a way that will get me banned, but more in a way that you can listen to on the road. Um, so, yeah, uh, listen to without watching, maybe. I'll paint the picture with my words for your mind. That's a that's a, a New Year's goal, a New Year's resolution. I don't know whose New Year's that would be. Uh, not lunar. Maybe there's a Martian New Year's that would match up or something. Uh, any case, uh, CK, hello. Good to see you. Question, have you tried or heard of breeding Cardinal Tetras, Rumino's Tetras, by using marbles? Yes, uh, I have. Um, I don't like using the same size marbles. Uh, I've actually done this a few times. Christy, hello. John, hello. Uh, from uh, Fall River, Mass. What's up? Um, so what I like to do if I have marbles, if I'm going to breed that way, and for those of you who are not aware of the marble method, uh, basically you get those little, um, they're also called Moncala beads you can get, or in vases for flowers, there's like these clear glass beads you can buy. Uh, basically you just need some semi-regular sized, but you want some irregularities in my experience. Uh, but, uh, you know, in the same ballpark size, uh, beads, uh, of say half an inch or so all the way up to an inch, I would say would work in diameter, uh, or even bigger really. And then you put that at the bottom of a bare tank. So you don't put any plants in or anything like that. And it allows the fish to spawn sometimes you can put like moss or something at the bottom but those eggs a lot of egg scattering fish don't have eggs that float and stick to things they have eggs that sink to the bottom and in nature they hope that those eggs get hidden and that the parents swim off because otherwise almost all fish parents other than say cichlids uh will just munch on their own eggs if they feel like it because i mean protein but uh yeah, so I think using big, medium, and small marbles mixed together works really well because then the, the size of the pockets in between allows more of those eggs to fall down, if that makes any sense. Like if you've got a layer of really big ones at the bottom, uh, then the cracks in between at the bottom are going to be like a nice size void. 
and then some medium ones and you know and then but even the small ones you want those spaces to be big enough that the eggs are going to fall down in there and the adults can't get their head in down in there to eat them uh so yeah that works well i would just say that when you do that it's best to do it first thing in the morning uh you know you feed them a, a nice live meal at, at night uh you can uh if you want uh, add a little bit of fresh water, do a nice water change for most species. And then uh, you want the water to be pretty acidic and usually you don't want the tank to be very light. But first thing in the morning when the lights come on, when they're like half strength, if you can control that or you can throw a towel over the tank or something. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about not enough light to even grow plants really. Uh, just enough so that they can see what they're doing that's when most of those little uh, tetras and, and uh, rasboras and things like that want to breed. And so they'll, uh, they'll breed in that, that evening slash morning light. And uh, you can actually see them scattering it and one following the other if, if you've sexed them. Uh, I would say, if possible, get like two males and three females or a male and three females. Some combo like that works pretty well. Uh, I just wouldn't do like 10 with five on five. Like it just gets too chaotic. And uh, a lot of times one won't uh, match up. And it's even more helpful if you can separate the males and females for up to two weeks beforehand. Any more time than that, uh, most studies I've read on most fish, they don't show any more improvement. So two weeks is enough in a fish's mind of most species to be like, I don't, I don't recognize that gender anymore. Uh, go about my life, and then all of a sudden, boom, uh, they see them, and there's nothing they want more in the world than that other gender. Uh, but yeah, that works great with Danios and uh, cherry barbs, and uh, you know, uh, steam fought aquatics. He said he just got some. Uh, so Bob, who lives north of me, about an hour, he just got some. Uh, uh, some uh, cherry barbs and male, female. The, the females were really swollen bellied, and so he uh, thought that they might have eggs in them. And sure enough, they did. They laid eggs in the in the uh, net when he was scooping them out. And so he put those in a tank all by themselves, like nothing in that tank, uh, no fish or shrimp or anything, just plants. And so uh, they'll probably hatch off and be good to go soon. Um, Hey, 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 Fish Tropic, Jennifer, hello. Uh, let's see. Okay, I'm excited to try it. What's the next step when they spawn? Yeah, I remove the adults. If I see them spawning and it's a decent amount, like, you know, 50 eggs or something, I'll usually take the parents out right then. Some people leave them in, but usually you want more of a planted tank when that's going on um, so that the, the, the fish really forget about what's going on and then the babies can hang out. But I usually like to have a tank set up like my ones downstairs that have uh, have critters in them, little teeny copepods and little uh, isopods, just all sorts of different little, uh, you know, uh, what's the word, like plankton and microscopic life. Uh, Daphnia, brine shrimp you can add for food, but they're not even going to eat Daphnia size or brine shrimp size food, a lot of them, when they're first born, like baby baddis or, um, you know, some rasboras. They want Artema. So just having a tank that's full of that life, like a shrimp tank or something, they're going to eat the Hydra. They're going to eat the little Planaria eggs. They're going to, you know, all that kind of stuff is what they eat. That being said, the Planaria may eat fish eggs too. So, you kind of have to be careful. I like to use a clean clean tank when I do the marble thing, but if I'm doing more of a colony style where I'm going to leave the parents in, I want it really well planted. Uh, so, yeah, because they'll eat the babies. But then, you know, you want to feed them just uh, baby brine shrimp, you know, sh de-shelled uh, baby brine shrimp, uh, newly hatched. And then you can feed them like two day old baby brine shrimp or Daphnia as they get bigger. But by that size, they should be eating flake food. The uh, aquarium co-op has fry food in a little um, ketchup squirt bottle. Like I guess it's not next to me, but that thing, they love that. It's, it's like algae and salmon guts ground up and monkey meat and who knows, little dirty birdie feet. Um, 
let's see here. Uh, 10 gallon stickling ideas. I don't have any uh, ten stickling like stickleback stickling like native fish or what what exactly are you referring to there nick um any advice for caring for red cherry shrimp uh yeah i would say go back and watch any of my videos on caring for red uh oh stocking yeah yeah uh we'll we will get there you know what let's take a look real quick i said i was gonna do this plus it's getting dark there's a beautiful uh sunset you can see how pink i am uh outside look at that fall it's it's a miracle could you guys i can't really get it to show up as pink as it is but trust me it's like neon pink and it looks really cool but i need to light up the house with more than the hopes of sun rising again um so before we get into color theory let me turn on some lights because color, after all, is just how we respond to light reflecting off an object or the lack thereof. Come on, come on. I believe in you sockets that are dangerous and are going to burn the house down. Oh, come on. All right, guys, hold on. Ah! That gator tried to kill my family in uh, 1964. That sheep just died of old age. Okay, so let's go downstairs real quick. I, if I lose you, I, I will be back. I will restart the stream, and I apologize. Hopefully that won't happen. But I have news. I have things I want to show you. Ginger Graves, hello, my lovely. How are you? Um, so try not to do too much Blair Witch. I got the tripod. So news. There's no room in this room, any room, room, any room, room. All right, guys. So remember when I bought that particle board thing and I put up the video recently about how I was going to seal it and it was going to be okay and I was like mediocre about it? Well, <clears throat> I said uh, so long to that idea. I got this uh, set up from a friend in our fish club locally. And you know what else I got? I got a a uh, twin star it's used but that's okay it's got the struts look how close it is to fitting so it doesn't fit exactly right so I'm gonna need to put like something in there just because it's the UNS tank and that's made for ADA and then I want to get a timer and a power thing and then I got all this uh, substrate and stuff he's getting out of the hobby and so I lucked out big time with that I paid $300 for it and uh, so I just thought I'd show you that. And then I also got this filter, which currently is cycled. And uh, so, yeah, that, that's the tank that'll be going in the place of the one upstairs. At the top of the stairs, the little 17.5 gallon. That one's a 40 gallon breeder. It'll stay there. But the little tank is either going to come down here. My wife says it can't stay upstairs, which is really frustrating. And I'm bummed. Or it could go over here where all this junk is. A bunch of her junk is over there, too. Um, but she always says, this is my room. This is not my bike, either. Uh, and then here, the filter, literally, I mean, he's had it running for two years on a 20-gallon tank. And this thing is an Odyssey. Uh, I think it's the 500, but I'm not. Yeah, 500. So it does 500 gallons per hour. And it puts out quite the rate of water. And right now, it's got bio beads and like custom stocked ceramic. You know the way the way I would do it. I mean, I'm friends with uh, the guy showman who who hooked me up with it. Uh, so I paid a hundred for that, a hundred for that, and a hundred for this. And then I'm taking back the the Petco or PetSmart one, uh, and I'll, so I'll get a hundred back from that. So thank you guys so much for your support, uh, supporting all of the uh, endeavors I've had. Now the other thing is um, up here, this tank with the shrimp and all the val. I've got so much corkscrew val. This is the stuff from. Uh, Lucas Brett's the red corkscrew valve uh, metallic red I should say these shrimp are not doing so well um, they I don't know why but these are not doing so well they don't look good 
uh, they're just disappearing by the day. And I don't see the bodies, so I mean, so they're eating each other. And uh, yeah, it's a huge canister filter. It's good up to 100 gallons, and he had it on a 20. So it is cycled, but I feel like I should just bleach it and start all over. But I've got all these plants that I'm really excited to put into the new tank, like this Cryptnuri and, uh, you know, some of the other Crypt. Uh, plants that I have and pink flamingo crypt and uh, a bunch of stuff like that so um, you know I'm excited about that all this Anubius that I've been having shrimp clean for me um, you can see they're up there uh, cleaning for me there's actually yeah, there's quite a few still on there so these shrimp I don't feed any shrimp food and I don't feed this endler tank very much um, but I do feed uh the catfish in here because I want them to breed and they lay eggs and have a few babies here and there. But I just moved a bunch more quarries from over here. I moved 12 quarries uh, into this tank. So now uh, it's a bit overstocked, but you can see how uh, how much green greenery there is growing in here. And uh, it's going to be OK. Like you can see how thick the the plants are and the roots are actually coming out of the, the gravel because it's not even living substrate so now this ro filter is supposed to be broken he, he just gave it to me and said it's broken but he said it came that way brand new and he can't figure it out now knowing my buddy uh when he was at the peak of this collection time now this was his last uh, this is the last of his aquarium stuff that he hooked me up with so I have a bunch of weird airlines and uh, fixtures and then um, like partial bags of sand and stuff like that. That's really going to help. Like it was perfect timing. Uh, it was 300 bucks and I totally used uh, the Patreon and the Super Chat money uh, going on. And then also I had to treat uh, a bunch of tanks for um, worms, which I think actually came in on my stupid ram's horn snails but in any case uh i had to treat everybody for worms in like four tanks and so that kind of got expensive oh look we've got a buried blue dream up here speaking of colorful things where are you there you are look how pretty you are um so yeah uh where the heck are all the the little uh my my little lovelies where are all the Panda loaches. Panda loaches, where are you? Oh, okay, there they are. They're around. They're just being shy. Um, but in any case, we're going to head back upstairs because I have color theory stuff to discuss. I just knew that folks would be asking about... Oh, when here is that aquarium co-op small fish fry food. Love that stuff. GRB Aquatics, what's up? Um... And also, this is what I feed all my inverts. They all love it. Even my catfish like this, but they seem to kind of wait until it's mushy, and then they'll eat it. So I've even, like, put it in a bowl before and let it get mushy and then let them eat it. Uh, this tank I'm going to totally redo, I think, also, um, just because. So then the next, the next torture for me is to figure out... Do I put the old tank at the top of the stairs over here, which feels really awkward? It's going to, you know, we got to get all this stuff out of the way, clearly. Um, or do I drain this guy down, uh, put the shrimp down here in a smaller 10? They don't need 20 long. There's not even enough of them anymore. But then I'd be getting rid of a 20 long, and I don't like to be wasteful. I mean, I'd give the tank away to someone locally, but for a dollar per gallon, it's not like the end of the world to get rid of the 20 long, especially when they're all in sponge filters and stuff. But, you know, you know, you guys know. I don't want to get rid of tanks if I don't have to. Can you guys see how pretty? Yeah, you can't see it. Uh, they built this house with no windows, or this apartment with no windows, on any of the walls that would matter. It, oh, I mean this one. But this is the only spot with a view. And it's like the porch. The porch and half of the living room. You'd think they'd have made a view everywhere. Why Why wouldn't they? And then they, there's windows all over the back side. That look into the side of a hill. So... Um, the other thing, this is what's getting replaced, obviously, if you're listening, I apologize, but 
this um, this table will be moved and uh, that stand downstairs will be coming in. CO2, all the electronics can then go into the cabinet with the filter. It'll look like this without the hang off the back. And uh, this, I really just don't want to let this, this hasn't had CO2 or anything in a while. And, uh, you know, look how happy they are to see you guys. Like every friggin' fish in the tank is hanging out at the, at the um, front. Yeah, it's a Kari crab and invertebrate brit food. Um, it's probably made of those things also. So I moved the Kali loaches a while back so they could breed. And now I have, like I thought I had quite a few shrimp, but I have like way, 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 way too many of these shrimp. Just every surface, when you look carefully is covered in Malawa and Neo uh, or in Caradina shrimp. And then these ones are fine. They're not breeding. I wish they would though. These are the giant Japanese ones from aquatic arts. Uh, this one's turned yellow. You guys saw it red. You guys have seen it green. It just turns colors. It's really cool. Uh, also cleaning up some, um, some, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. What is it called? Java uh, ferns back there, but they've got Thor's hammer. That's what it's called. And then there was some sort of like blight on this Anubius coffifolia. Um, it was like rotting and black, and it looks like it's turning around here. Um, but yeah, and then there's another one of those giant Japanese short nose algae eating shrimp. You can see they're quite a bit bigger. Next to the Malawa shrimp, which have the white eyes there. And then the Gold Nebula, the Aquatic Arts, I think is the only place to be selling them right now. But they just proliferate like crazy. They eat a ton of algae, and they've got those little stripes and spots of gold and silver reflective color. Okay, so let's talk about color. Let's talk about color, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Uh, all right. Let's, let's get back to one place here so everybody doesn't want to vomit any more than normal. Gimbal, be good. Mm, Bryant Gimbal, initiating. Come on. J.H., I saw that you are in California. Welcome to the West Coast. Welcome to the Best Coast. And welcome to the live stream. We were just looking at fish and shrimp in San Francisco. Uh, pardon my voice, everybody, because I'm I'm sick. I don't know, I don't know how else to put it. Uh, I'm growing these awful growths from the side of my face. They look like kind of like this stuff up here, um, except it's just scraggly. Um, so I don't know what to do. The doctor warned me that they might have to actually cut all this off. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Any case, uh, enough of the sarcastic um, stuff. Let's get into color theory. What do you guys think? Uh, let me just take a look at the the chat real quick, um, uh, cause you guys are quicker than meets the eye. Um, Alan got green laser quarries a couple hours ago. Oh man, that with uh, Kubota rasboras. That's the green rasboras. And some quarries. Oh, man, that is a really cool combination. Um, that is awesome. So as you guys know, I've been thinking about what in the heck am I going to... Alan, $6 holla. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, I appreciate that super chat. I appreciate that super chat. Um, that is why I'm able to do this right now. To be honest with you guys... Obviously, I'm going to take care of what I have, but the whole um, thing that I got a 90p rimless that I'm going to aquascape, and I didn't have any of the gear for it, really. Like, it's just, it was out of stock six months ago when I had the money for it. Then I had a bunch of dental, eh, got to get dentures. Isn't that great? At 32, I'm going to have dentures. And I'm getting implants on the teeth, but they have to do it kind of one at a time and do grafts and stuff. Um, so basically that 
ate a hole in my pocket. So I apologize that I haven't put the stuff together yet. And that uh, all the super chat or all the Patreon funds really, because super chat funds really have gone all to just upkeep of uh, the aquarium and most of Patreon too. Uh, but not all of it. Some of it has gotten kind of sidetracked for utilities, you know. So um, usually I try whatever money you guys give me for uh, merchandise, which there's links to my shirts with artwork on them down below um, from Teespring. Uh, and anything like that, any uh, plants, animals, shrimp that I'm selling, that money, I try to keep it in the in in its own ecosystem of the hobby. And, um, you know, so that way, you know, if I'm making 200 bucks off you guys a month or 300 a month, uh, taxes will take a third of that or whatever. But after that, then, I, you know... I try to pay the utility bills, the food bills, feed them good food, and uh, then with the extras, hopefully reinvest in things like, you know, that RO filter or CO2. And so it, you guys are the reason why I've been able to rebuild this fish room right now because I have not been working a nine to five job. I've been working freelance as a graphic designer, which uh, is great in its freedom, but it's awful in that <laughs> there's no... Uh, uh, retirement or whatever but i'm not here to complain about that i'm here to thank you for the super chats and the patreon stuff and to let you know that all the stuff you're looking at is uh stuff i'd like to share and keep you guys updated on and hopefully learn things from and then pass that on to you and you know if i get to try out something because you guys made that happen uh obviously you guys deserve to know you know what the heck happened with that you know so um, that's that. But I want to talk about color theory finally. Um, let's see here. So I have a little chart, a chart. And let's see here. Let me take a sip of this and then we'll reposition the tripod. I'm out, Dr. Pepper. They don't sponsor me, but they could. <sighs> All right, let's see here. Whoa, Ginger. Oh, my goodness. Gracious gal. $50 super chat. Wow, thank you. That is really touching. Thank you, Ginger. Um, wow, um, I really appreciate that. Uh, that will really help enormously for stocking the tank. Um, as I told you guys, I'm going to work with Aquatic Arts on some of the stocking stuff. Hopefully some oddball things. I want them to start carrying wood cats and some odd tetras and things like that. And so I've been talking to the, the guy who orders for them. And so hopefully we're going to do a kind of thing where if, I, if they give me like five angelfish and I buy 12 tetras or whatever, something like that, the, the idea will be that then they're going to do whatever amount of money between them giving me and me spending. Uh, they're going to put that back into a fund and we'll do giveaway with gift cards. So that's the idea right now. Uh, but obviously we have to get the tank cycled and all that. So let's see here. So thank you very much. Um, yeah. And I've asked uh, you guys what wood cats you'd like to see. And for, for me, I think the Galaxy... The Honeycomb and the Ninja, a.k.a. the Orca ones, are the ones I would really like to see. Um, I can get those Latin names later, but those are just some really beautiful ones. Pretty middle of the road to take care of. There are two types of, there's an Orca or Killer Whale and a Ninja that get confused. And there's actually two uh, species there that have not been... Um, separated and you can check out my other videos on tatia Mo mosaica uh those on those catfish because uh we figured out the difference when i was working at aquarium zen and uh we ordered them in from cichlid exchange and literally uh i got stabbed by a little venom barb on one of them uh when i was trying to get it out of the net and they, they were like these guys don't have venom glands and then we looked at it and they're like these don't have white dots on their back so we called around, and it turns out that, yeah, there's another type uh, that has mostly black and just white bellies. That's the type I had. 
Uh, but I'd like to get one of the two of those back in because they're really, really pretty fish. And they're nocturnal, so they do hide in the day. But they're kind of cool. Like if you had those and coolie loaches and uh, some other catfish, you know, plecos or um, I'm trying to think of, you know, some other fish that like to hunt at night. Um, but that could be a fun tank to kind of have at night. Side note, while we're talking about color theory and everything, uh, mm. There we go. Color theory. So side note, um, this is color theory just like you would have in an art class or in a design class. Uh, Daniel keeping fish, heading to bed. Good. Well, thanks for dropping in, buddy. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks for thanks for the love. Have a good night's sleep. Dream of fish. Uh, so fish at night. When we put the blue light on, that is for nocturnal fish. That blue light lets fish see like as if it were moonlight. But it also keeps the other fish up because the other fish can see because blue is a cool light. Um, if we use red like in a black, uh, in a like a, a dark room that you develop film in, if you use a red light, actually, though, the fish don't interpret it because there's nothing in the wild that looks like the pure red light. And so neither the nocturnal nor the diurnal or um, I can't remember what it's called when they do both. Uh, fish, though, actually respond to it. So they're, they're kind of blind to it, just like we can't see ultraviolet light. So really, if you want to see nocturnal fish, you should check out um, the a red-colored lamp, not the blue color they always give you to simulate moonlight or nighttime. Uh, that's for people, not for um, not for fish comfort. Uh, Secret history: Do you think matten filters are good, not only for shrimp? Yeah, totally. They're just a big sponge filter. I think they work great. Okay, so with color theory, just like with fish. We gonna we you're gonna want to stock your tank with probably some rhyme or reason, especially if you're doing an aquascape or a public community tank. And color theory is something that arose in the 1700s up through now. I mean, there were various cultures that had different color theory for sure, Greeks, Romans, Egyptians, but the modern day color theory is basically split into two, and that is CMYK. In RGB. Now, this is this is interesting because one is additive and one is reductive. So, this one here means the the more things you add, so blue, yellow, and magenta, the more or cyan, magenta, yellow, and key, which is black. These little circles here add to each other. And when you add all three, you get black. So it's like mixing paint. It's like mixing pigment. However, for most of human history, we thought of colors or like this, sorry. But now with computers and TVs, RGB or red, red, green, blue, when they add together, they equal white. Now, why is that? Well, it's just like a prism. When you shine light through a prism, it splits into the colors of the rainbow. There's no brown in the rainbow. Uh, interesting side note. There's no uh, ochre. Uh, there's a set, you know, set of colors. And so those are distinguishable uh, colors that we have arbitrarily grouped into, uh, you know, 12 colors or 8 colors or 15 colors or whatever it may be. But this first color wheel is not just randomly set up. So it's set up so that green plus red equals white or black. If you, if you mix it together in this world of pigments, you'll get a dark brown or a black eventually, uh, in theory, mixing those colors. Same with yellow and purple. But in reality, if you're mixing paints, you get a brown color usually. You get kind of a brown color if you mix these. Now on a TV screen or an LCD, so let's try to zoom in on the computer. Can you guys see that? I don't want it to be too nauseating, but let's see. Let's try to find something. Can you guys see that white is actually a combination of green 
and then yellow and red all on at the same time next to each other and they're making this weird uh, pattern for you whereas these other colors are checkerboards of like blue red blue red blue red in different de densities that is a that is a result of this color theory in that light coming at us we interpret way different than uh than light reflecting off sub substances so just like your printer isn't going to print white this idea of colors doesn't there's no white in it and in the light spectrum from prisms there's no black in it because black is the absence of color so those are the two basic things and and one is like reflective color and one is the color of the object or rather the the texture on the surface of a fish for instance uh that reflects red and even more complex than that, if we just want to get to color reflecting off of fish, most fish have pigment, which is their actual color on their body. And that is a texture. And so if they appear blue to us, that means that all the other light is being absorbed by that fish's body on that part. And only the blue light is being reflected off of that fish to our eye now if you shine a red light on that fish it will appear to be gone it will look like there's no fish there almost because red will cancel out the blue if it's it's actual you know true oppositional tone of it now on this though if you have a blue fish and you shine red on it what you'll get actually is a purple or silver and that's how fish reflect light that's light bouncing off of them, off their iridophores. So pigment is what color they would be without like harsh sunlight. So just diffuse color. And what that is, is every color of a thing. Uh, so let's see over here. Every color that we're looking at absorbs a light in different ways. So you are seeing white reflecting off of this leaf because it's just too intense it, uh the light above reflects so much of itself that that you're just seeing white that doesn't mean that the object's not green underneath and this happens with neocaridina shrimp just because you see a blue shrimp doesn't mean that its flesh underneath is not red like a bloody mary just like when my blue shrimp died the other day and I showed you guys that video of its pink body. It's the reflection of the outer layer. Uh, and then once it dies, that layer is not the same texture anymore. And it can't reflect the same wavelengths and the pigments are gone. Now, when you look at this, like on this fish, uh, you see the iridophores are causing that sparkly shimmer. And those are actually little metallic looking colorful crystals in the fish that give fish scales their scaliness and they are iridophore that i like i said the thing is called a ir iridophores and they are made up of guanine crystals and guarine crystals inside these little clear capsules and they work just like prisms and they reflect color back now if they're silver which is the easiest structure they're shaped just like a little, uh, like the Pink Floyd prism. And that's what they look like under the microscope. So when light hits them, instead of seeing uh, rainbow shimmer, you see white. And so you'll see some fish, like this guy is reflecting green because there's green around him right now. Uh, but some fish will reflect white no matter what, um, or you know another color no matter what, if it's getting the white light and it's not surrounded by it. That is all has to do with the microscopic texture of the fish. So the, the, the blue that you see on the fish, on the fins that are not iridophore, this is a selected pigment. And if the fish were dead and not shiny, you would still see that blue. You would still see this black or chocolate color. You'd still see this reddish color. This silver would still be a silvery gray color, but it stops being reflective once those crystals break down. So... Those are two components, and I find it interesting that fish have a reflective component that f features uh, playing with light 
that puts it through a prism actually of on their you know in their cells it's a prism and reflects out only certain colors and some fish can control that like you see his tail is turning blue right now and that is like the pink floyd prism if you could think of that um if it shines on this different colors of blue purple green like certain colors of the spectrum reflect out of that seemingly silver patch so when he's at another angle it doesn't look like anything but when we hit light just at the right angle you can see where that's going to reflect that crazy blue color let's see if we can get him to do it again so you can see it in the tail again and whatnot so I just wanted to kind of explain that from, from this chart, that these colors are the reflective. This is light coming in and going into a cell under the fish's skin and reflecting out. And then this is the color of flesh itself. And all light to humans is light just reflecting off a surface. But most surfaces are not uh, like fish scales. They're not like little prisms that can reflect that gasoline or, or fish shimmer. So that's kind of a really cool thing to me. And it should be remembered that that's half of the equation for fish. Now, the reason for that is because they want to see ultraviolet light. Fish, I was asked in the comments, can fish see colors? Yes, a lot of fish can see really good colors. Some fish can see in spectrums we cannot, as well can their predators. And so they have evolved to reflect uh, for instance, like a little Danio, um, like a uh, the the uh, tin winnie or gold ring Danio reflects light all over. And when you put on an infrared camera, there is more light reflecting out like a disco ball off of that critter than is like. So you see the fish, but if you're looking at it ultraviolet you see spots of ultraviolet on everything on its habitat because wavelengths are coming in it's reflecting it off in crazy directions because of the shape of the prisms that are made up of those guanine and guarine crystals in the iridophores in the skin i know this is kind of confusing to try to explain but um it's really cool how that works and the fact that a red fish is a red fish to humans because we've evolved to see the color red as we do. It's kind of that thing that a lot of people come to at some point in their life when they are like, hey, I wonder if your red is the same as my red. And the answer is it doesn't really matter uh, as long as we all can agree that this is you know, red or orange or whatever it comes out as across your monitor. Um, we'll go with this, lime green. Um, and so that it, it kind of doesn't matter how we, how if if we're seeing colors the same or different unless you're like color blind which then you're just not seeing the full range and that's a different story so we're going to pretend like everyone can see color here i'm sorry if you can't um alan just mentioned and thank you alan that mantis shrimp can see more colors than we can we have three color receptors they have 12. Yeah, so we have rods and cones in our eyes. One is for light and dark and movement, and the other set are basically for pigment colors, like like RGB or CMYK, that kind of thing. And some critters have all uh, all sorts of different receptors. Uh, birds of prey, a lot of them can see ultraviolet. Some uh, critters can see heat radiation waves. I mean, there's just it's really crazy. Uh, you know, snakes can see uh, heat and they can see um, smell. And that it, that's just because they're wired. And so are many, I should, talk, let's talk about this. So are many catfish and things like that also too. So if a catfish has those whiskers, just because you see with your eyes, when you close your eyes and you put your hand on a ball, do you still imagine what a ball would look like? Like, could you still picture that? So they're getting the sensory receptor info and we're finding now in, in many animals that they have a visual component to these receptors. So you have a visual part of your brain, you have a textural part of your brain. And just like when you look at something spiky, the textural part of the human brain lights up as, as if there's a threat there or something or fire, you know, uh, we can think those things through fish, 
we don't know necessarily what they know in that sense. But it's kind of interesting that that the catfish can feel the vibrational waves of pressure in the water and they can probably see in their in their little mind they probably see better than with their eyes a lot of them can't see very well uh and they can paint a picture of where everything is you know just like echolocation like dolphins or bats or sonar and whales um and you have to remember that fish have these lateral lines which are organs that run along the side of them and uh, along the side, like along that black stripe of this guy here. And that lets them feel the pressure in the water, the temperature in the water, the speed of the water, the pressure at the surface of the water, all sorts of things. Uh, and color can be important, you know. Clearly fish can see color if, uh, if color so important in mating in like endlers. And we know that orange and magenta are like the colors in the wild that endlers are drawn to because it means that they, the males have gotten uh, the nutrients that are hardest to acquire in their natural habitat. And uh, it means, you know, you can't make those colors without those nutrients. So this would be a male that is highly desired right here. Uh, if we could ever get him to focus, focus this guy right here hot stuff coming through um all right so up here this guy has no pigment except on his fin you can see this rasbora uh, he's hiding now of course he's hiding now but he has no pigment except on his fin and he uses all iridophores so he's all that silver color which really if you look at him up close his skin doesn't have a color it's like a clearish color and it's just a mountain of these little crystals on each scale so it looks like a geode like when you break open like an amethyst or a rock and you see all those teeny crystals and they make up one big crystal surface come on focus um i don't know why nothing's focusing tonight guys i'm sorry maybe something's messed up on my phone really you know you want to focus but yeah so you can see those scales but while he may not look colorful to us, to other fish, he may look like a freaking rainbow of UV light reflecting bing, bing, bing all over. And that is a form of camouflage. So it just depends. Like in, in the wild, little silver fish probably are a schooling fish and they probably live in the shallows often or near the surface where there's a lot of light. And they probably have uh, people uh, critters hunting them that can either see uv light or can see the reflective light off of them and so they do that to confuse where one starts and the other one ends um now other fish have other tech ta tactics you know some fish blend in they have stripes and they just look like things some catfish look like the rocks shrimp a lot of times look like the uh look like the critters uh alongside them uh in the bottom of of lakes and rivers you know they'll disguise themselves as like little periwinkles or isopods like peppered looking like just little rocks pebbles whatever's in the sand um and you know that's where you get patterns and things but another thing i wanted to point out is so in this tank can you guys see how yellow everything is it's really a green color but this is the two foot bottom of the tank we're not really seeing any reds, even though this is this crypt right here. If we pulled it up, it would be red. The bottom side of this crypt is red. But we're kind of only seeing greens and yellows, and that's because that's what reflects up through the water column. And so the deeper you go, if fish live deep down, they don't even need the crazy colors. So fish that live deep down, a lot of times they have light up colors or they have you know uh phosphorescence or bioluminescence colors they don't need uh colors that reflect off of our normal visible light spectrum for humans like these wonderful cribs and these guys light up by moving pigment around so it's not so much the iridophores you can see the iridophore uh scales right behind their eye you can can you see that that shiny spot on their gill those that that is a is a patch that's full of iridophores and uh we don't know exactly what that's for 
but that's why it glistens like that. Man, this thing is just not focusing. I wonder if... Hold on one sec. Let me try to wax on, wax off the lens with the t-shirt. Is this going to be any better? But as they go deeper, that pink, all those colors, they look lamer. <laughs> they're just not showing up as well as when they're up near the top of the water and you can see all the color like here. So... That's the physics of how fish and color uh, physically work, uh, in, I guess. is Yeah, that's the right way to say that. Um, but now we're talking about when you're stocking your tank, how is the human reaction to that going to work? Um, yeah, color blindness also, I'm just looking at some uh, comments. David, you're totally right. Color blindness is mostly a male thing. I think it's like 9 out of 10 cases are males. Um, come on guys, here an artist who actually talks about fish. Let's support and like this guy. Please share. Thank you so much, Fish Tropic. I really appreciate that. Um, those of you liking, those of you checking out my shirts on, uh, on, uh, Teespring in the description. Uh, I'd much rather sell you art or give you something that's of use than people just donating money. Um, I'm not going to complain. I mean, thank you so much. I am humbled by the uh, super chats and so forth but i would like to give you guys something i wish you guys all lived locally so i could give you some of these fish or some of these shrimp or plants i would love that all right so it looks like tonight we're probably not going to get into the depths of this but i just want to go over the surface of it and we'll probably do a series um we'll probably do a series i think on uh the theories of how to do how to stock a tank uh aesthetically and what i mean by that is um do you want to use colors that are similar or complementary uh complementary means even though you'd think that means like together it means that they they equal either if they mix them together they would be black if they're if they're a pigment based color or if they're reflective light they would equal a white light so like lime green and like a magenta so and they're set up on this wheel. This wheel isn't just, you can't just organize this wheel in any way you want. It's set up in the line spectrum and then wrapped around. Uh, and that's why you get like two rainbows instead of one. Um, you're not just going to get infinite colors out of a spectrum. It, it ends, but you can wrap it around itself. So this is a great website. I'll think I'll have to link it. But it goes through all the color theory um, texts and scrolls that we've had this is one from like uh, the 1700s this really old one here um but then there's a bunch too from the 1800s 1879 this one's kind of cool it shows you um you know uh lightness or saturation so just like when you play with your color on your on your phone in uh in instagram and you're playing with the saturation if the saturation's 10 uh the colors are going to be bright as it gets down the saturations low uh, obviously the colors are going to go darker and darker and get more similar and then contrast here is by how far away it is from the other one so contrast is is ironically very similar to uh when we'd call colors complementary like complementary colors and contrasting colors are um kind of the same thing it's just a confusing word um, so obviously, uh, the most basic theory of matching up colors is primary colors. That's, you just get your basics covered. So maybe some blue tetras, some, uh, amber tetras and, uh, what, some yellow tetras of some sort, some like lemon tetras or silver tip, uh, tetras perhaps. Uh, that's one, that's, that's your primary color. Then you got your secondary colors, which is what happens when you start mixing your primary colors. So that's green. I know this isn't showing up the greatest, but green, purple. Whoa, my finger makes it work. Weird. Technology's weird. Look at that. Oh, it's all just a matter of how the sensor on my phone is interpreting, capturing these light beams prism and decides if it's close enough to the threshold to show you guys purple or black or brown or whatever it looks like to you guys uh so in any case secondary is the mix of the primary 
tertiary is the mix of all the ones in between primary, if that makes any sense. So orange, uh, a lighter kind of like magenta color, uh, then like, uh, I guess that's magenta. This is like, I don't know, canary or something. What do they call it? Do they have a name for it on here? I don't know. But let's get my finger back in here to help. And then purple, and then like navy blue or cyan blue maybe, or cerulean blue maybe. And then lime green, and then back to orange. Okay. So those ones are called tertiary. You guys, uh, artists set up palettes this way. Now fish, they don't need to follow these rules at all. Uh, but what we're more interested in is, so these are set up this way, and, and this is how a lot of artists would set up their palette, because by having these, you can make these, and then by having both of these, you can make these. So that into every color here, in theory, if you had good pigment. Uh, and in the right amounts, and the right luminosity, and that that is either contrast or luminance. Uh <laughs> Now, why this is important, why painting theory is important to fish keeping is because we still look at complementary colors or analogous colors. Analogous is when, like, like this tank is stocked with analogous colored fish. So what we do is we've got uh, tetras that are ember tetras. We've got kitty tetras that have yellow and orange. The ember tetras have orange. And then the kitty tetras have some yellow. And then in here, uh, there used to be uh, lemon, red-eyed lemon tetras. And they were orange and red on them. And then we have these yellow and black spotted. So they're all kind of in the same side of that warm orange color spectrum in here. And then we have the opposite, a complementary, with the purple and the blue uh, on this fish, which is cribs. But we've selected that because it still ties in, or I have, uh, because it still ties in, even though it's got all these colors, it still ties in with the yellow spectrum and the orange spectrum of the other fish. Um, because you got orange, you got yellow, you got the stripes, uh, even though you've got these unique colors. So the idea is that hopefully these fish stand out. Um, you know, they're the, the, show, the showstopper, so to speak. Now, black and white fish also can do this very well for your tank. So, you know, if you've got an albino something, uh, it's going to really show off um, in a tank if you've got color everywhere and plants everywhere. But if you have black gravel and, a, and an albino guy, it'll stand out the most of all. Um, you know, if you have white gravel and an albino, then it, obviously you've got uh, analogous colors and they're not going to show up. So you have to kind of ask yourself, do I want like a spotlight species like that stands out from everyone in the tank? Do I want a, just a crazy color explosion of every color guppy or, you know, what uh, cribs and, you know, there can be a lot of colors out there. Um, do you want that or do you want all orange fish and then one of the opposite? So a blue fish. Or do you want it to be all shiny fish and one matte color fish? So there's a lot of different ways that we can say, a lot of different things we can say are beautiful. I like fish that change color, like these cribs here, in that they will um, kind of always be changing the dynamic of the tank, uh, you know? And so that's kind of cool. But in the new tank, I had talked about doing uh, amber tetras, which would fall into this color here. Um, and then maybe kitty tetras, which kind of have all these colors and black. And then doing angels that are, are blue to like powdered blue to a steel sea foam green kind of color, um, which would give them, uh, th they would stand out totally. But now I'm wondering, should I just do like platinum angels? Uh, because that would go with anything. So I would have more, latitude in what to do um because you guys have been looking at that color chart for a while um i just thought i'd bring you guys over here now another interesting point is that natural colors uh we don't see them as wavelengths of light in the prism of light so like brown and ochre like i said you don't see that when you split the light prism uh 
you know, it's it's not there. So what is it made of? Why is our eye seeing that? Well, it's dark. It's it's actually like green, and uh, it's it's how two colors next to each other. So everything you look at on TV, I know this. I keep jumping around. Everything you look at on TV is either red, blue, or green. I know that's weird, right? You swear it's white. Well, if you go up to it and look really closely, especially on old TVs that didn't have good, you know, that were really like kind of pixelated, you look closely and it's actually like that in this area, maybe it's yellow, 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 blue. And that from far away would look like light green. Well, green, red, green, 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 blue, green, 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 red, green, 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 green. That comes off as like light brown. So you're not actually picking one point to take in as a color. And what's kind of interesting is if you take a picture of a fish or your tank and you pixelate it, so you shrink it down in Photoshop or just by size over and over and over, and it simplifies it down to the average of the colors that are perceived uh, for you. Like you'll get like on this aquarium, you'd think maybe you'd get green, but who knows, maybe it's going to come out lime. Like, you don't know what that average is sometimes. Wow, there are so many baby endlers showing up tonight for some reason. I think the weather is changing is what's up because everybody is just swarming. Now, these are the guys that reflect the ultraviolet light very well. Um, they did a study with them, so that's why I happen to know that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... Those are, I, I don't know if I went too far off track, but I thought I'd explain kind of how light and color works, uh, both, you know, because your light matters. So right here, it looks white. Uh -huh. But when we look at the reflection of it, we can see that it's blue, green, red, soft peach, white. And those colors, uh, you know, green, blue, off red or peachy color and white, they average out to a warm white or a cool white light. And that's why lighting is so uh, expensive or important. And a lot of times the more light is reflected, so it's reflected down to here and then from here and then over to there, um, the more that it's reflected, you can break down those colors. So here you can actually see the colors from the light, like the red or the peachy color. But you get secondary colors. So you get like the purple, which is a mix. But when we saw the chart, it's a mix of red and blue, right? So purple will be should be in between red and yeah, there's a little bit of blue. You can see it on the edge of my finger really well right there. But then there's purple. So light is important on top of your tank. And, and even if it looks like one color, every light this probably is going to have a bunch of oranges and things is going to highlight different colors for your fish. And like, that's why I really like the Fluval planted plus 3.0 is you can get on your uh, phone and actually dial in 20% red, 50% blue, a hundred percent, you know, yellow or whatever it is. I don't remember which colors they allow you to mess with. Uh, this is like a Christmas tree of shrimp. Hey, dang it. Don't look at me. I'm foaming at the mouth again. Do, 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 do. Okay. So these guys. Look at that. There's just so many of these shrimp. I need to sell some. Uh, or give some away to little Timmy for Christmas. Uh, I just hate shipping stuff. But I might need to soon. There's just too many for this little tank. And they're in the other tanks. And they're taking over too. Um, all right. So let me look at the question y'all have asked. Um, but uh, other than that, like, I hope that's like an okay introduction into not necessarily color theory of, of uh, color for art sake, but how color works in the natural world, where art got the ideas it has for why we, ha why we enjoy which colors we do. And maybe that'll make you think about why you like the colors you do. Um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, hit that like button, everybody. I would appreciate it. Uh, 
Fish Tropic, best stream of the night. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much, Fish Tropic. I want to thank again, uh, Ginger Graves. Thank you so much for the super chat. And Alan, of course, you're always super chatting. Thank you, buddy. Those of you who can't afford it, don't feel like it. I didn't earn it. That's totally fair. Let me know what I can do to make this experience more enjoyable for you. Uh, but also, uh, you know, I don't super chat every channel I watch. So just, uh, you know, if, if there's nothing like that and you're just short of money or whatever, you hit the like button. That's all you have to do and keep watching. Uh, I'm so lucky not to be colorblind. Another EZ or another the Z. I always mess that up. But hey, what about aging? I don't know. Some people in their 70s can tell apart can't can tell apart shades of I lost I lost the stream. I don't know. I I should read it in my head before I read it out loud. So many fish are dull and drab, but not boring. Subtle beauty of Amazon fish in dark tan in water. Yeah, well that's another thing to think about is dark water fish, black water fish uh, they may appear boring or drab to us, but underwater, when you see ultraviolet spectrum, maybe they look like a crazy rainbow of electric light to each other. You know, we're we're just didn't we didn't evolve underwater to see fish. Um, we don't need to. We just need to see their shape above water so we can spear it or grab it once it's out of the water. Um, let's see here. Fish tropic. All right, let's see. Magnetic fields. Yeah, some fish can definitely detect magnetic fields and where they are in the world for spawning and things like that, most likely. Um, all right, guys. So I think I'm going to get out of here soon, but thank you so much for joining me. Um, I will be coming up with more videos, hopefully about some historic stuff soon, and then obviously setting up that tank and then stocking that tank. And so that, that should be, as we enter the dark months, it should be a good, good time for that project. Um, thanks for putting up with me, even though I showed up to work today here, uh, looking scraggly. So please forgive me. It's just an illusion. It's just how light the swamp the lights reflecting off the swamp gases of Venus or something. Uh, Blue Ice Aquatics. Oh, and by the way, I need some more moderators. So if you're interested in moderating and I see you in these live streams a lot, you don't even need to be in this one. Uh, but if you stuck around until the end of this one or whatever, or you're a Patreon person, or you've just been rocking with the channel forever, uh, just drop a comment after this loads and uh, I'll hook you up as long as I trust you which is most of you guys, because you guys rock. Uh, I am so fortunate to have the viewers that I do and the kind of thoughtful and kind people that I do most of the time. Uh, it's uh, we're, we're pushing that 10,000 subscriber mark as I foam at the mouth again, Jesus. Uh, and so cheers to you guys. We'll have to do something fun for that. Um, give some stuff away, of course. That's... I just can't help myself. Uh, uh, all right, guys. Have a great night. Take care of your critters, your fish, your shrimp, your plants. Take care of the people around you. Take care of your business. And uh, don't forget to take care of yourself. Take some time. Sit down. Enjoy the things you care for. Uh, because if you can't enjoy the people you love and care for or the fish and plants and job the things you've accomplished, um, why are you doing it? Do something different. Uh, we need to be enjoying each other, spreading the love, uh, spreading that satisfaction, the sense of ownership and um, uh, stewardship over whether it's nature or creatures or even things. And uh, as long as that's done from a place of compassion and respect, uh, that's what we need to all be doing. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please like, share, find another video. Go back and check out the over 500 videos we have, if you'd like, uh, on this channel. A lot of good stuff gets overlooked when you've been around for two years as of this month. Um, actually, eight years on YouTube, but talking about fish nonstop for just two now. All right, guys, I will talk to you later. Take care and have a wonderful night. Swim on.